But what are the consequences? What are the consequences on our, on our health? What are the consequences on our on our immune system? On our uh, autonomic? What, what what happens when when we're not authentic? Well, anytime we are perceiving that what they're doing is not supporting us, not living up to expectation, and it's challenging us because we're wanting to change them to be like the way we want, and we feel superior and then inferior, that challenge activates our sympathetic nervous system. And our sympathetic nervous system activates um, testosterone, it sets up it makes the blood sugar go up, the blood pressure go up. It puts testosterone up because we're on defense. And we tend to, because we're disowning things, we're wanting to project our, our righteousness onto them and tell them what to be and what to do. Yeah. Now, when that sympathetic side of the autonomics comes online, we methylate epigenetically the DNA and histones, which is gene expression in the cells. And based on what we're judging, we'll determine what areas of the body, particularly those cells, the cells that are going to be involved. But when we do that, as I said, glucagon, if it's a pancreatic cell, glucagon goes up if we're sympathetic and blood sugar goes up. If it's a heart rate and the, the affects the kidneys, the blood pressure can go up because it can change the sodium potassium and it can change the baroreceptors. So, Every cell in the body has receptor sites for these autonomic nerve transmissions or nerve signals, signal molecules. And when we have sympathetic dominance, it could create a host of symptoms. If you were to go through and make a list of all of the autonomic responses, what the sympathetic does to every cell or what the parasympathetic does to every cell, anytime we feel we're superior and we're there challenging us, all of the sympathetic symptomatology starts coming online particularly based on what it is that we are judging and looking down on. On the other hand of the cycle, if all of a sudden, <clears throat> and I say cycle because we vacillate in our feelings about somebody, on the other side, when we're infatuated with them, the blood sugar goes down. We get hypoglycemic instead of hyperglycemic. So we have mm -hmm. more likely to have hypoglycemia than diabetes when we're infatuated with somebody. Our blood pressure goes down. We're sacrificing. We're playing underdog. Our muscles um, that normally get ready for fight or flight relax, and our digestive system comes into play. That's why when you're infatuated with somebody, you take them out to dinner and want to digest and rest. Take them to dinner and sleep with them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, so we, we give them chocolate, right, to increase the probability of them associating pleasure with us, sugar with us. And then uh -huh. we try to feed them, right? To make them more subdued and less aggressive. And then we try to get them to sleep because now they're ready to sleep. <laughs> so it's a, yeah. it's a parasympathetic mechanism. And so each of the perceptions affect the epigenetic through transmitters, which affect the cells, which affect physiology. And each of those symptoms if you understand what each cell represents and what, what the autonomics are doing to every cell, you can get a sense by the symptoms what psychologically is going on in the mind. I have a new book that I'm working on right now that'll be out probably in six months um, called Balance the Mind, Heal the Body. Nice, <clears throat> and it, beautiful. Yeah, it's, uh, it's designed to help people understand this, this scenario, how it works how our perceptions affect neurotransmitters and regulators and hormones and transmitters and uh, regulate modulators and how that affects gene expression and how it affects cells. And then what those symptoms are. And then what do those symptoms mean psychologically? Yeah. So what, what are some of those symptoms and what are some of those uh, triggers to happen? Well, let's say that you're, you're playing um, underdog in a relationship and you're afraid to, to say too much negativity and you're repressing what you're wanting to say. Yeah. And you're, you're probably, probably very common, right? Oh yeah. Very common, particularly yeah. in, in the female. Yeah. Um, they're what they really think they're not willing to say yet, particularly in the early stages. Yeah. Um, they're, but they're building up resentment slowly, but surely they're building up resentment because when they're playing underdog, 
uh, and they're minimizing themselves, the resentment builds them back up to try to level the playing field because mm -hmm. they're playing they're repressing. While they repress their thyroid gland, the thyroid gland originates from the thyroglossal duct, which is a portion of the tongue, and then comes and descends down below the tongue and then ends up with the thyroid gland right in this area, thyroid cartilage there. And right, what happens is the tongue uh, is involved in speech and swallowing, and people that have low thyroid have difficulty speaking and swallowing. They get thick tongues and slow speech and dry skin and dry hair. Wow. So what happens is if you repress yourself, you repress the autonomic impact on the thyroid gland. I heard, you say, so, dry, I heard you say dry ass before. Is that, do you also get dry ass? <laughs> well, you can get that. You can get that from the sympathetic side. That's the sympathetic side. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> but if you repress yourself and uh -huh. you start to build resentment, the autonomic nervous system, the purpose of building resentment is to try to counterbalance that and get yourself back up again. The autonomic is a homeostatic mechanism trying to keep your body back in homeostasis, back into balance. Mm. So we literally create symptoms to rebalance ourselves from our perception. And uh, what's interesting is epigenetically, when you get sympathetic, sympathetics oxidize. So it creates methyl groups to go and reduce the chemistry. And when you're parasympathetic, it alkalinizes and reduces, and it creates acetyl uh, groups that oxidize. So the, the body is doing what it can to bring things back into authenticity and homeostasis, because when you're in homeostasis, you heal. And when you're in authenticity, you have the most stable long-term relationships. So the physiology is creating symptoms. The thyroid gland is giving us feedback. You see people with low thyroids are repressing themselves, but you see people with high thyroids that nonstop talk, 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 and tactless speech. They don't worry yeah. about it because when you're self-righteous, you don't care about what their opinion is. You like to push them away because they're getting too close to you. Uh -huh. When you're the other way, you don't want them to leave. So you're afraid to speak up. So there's there's the thyroid gland is expressing the psychology just as the pancreas is, is doing it with blood sugar, just as the heart and kidneys are doing it with blood pressure. And the skin is doing it with dryness or moistness. And the digestive system, what's interesting, <clears throat> when we get under distress and we perceive something challenging us, the blood goes from our digestive organs and goes out to the periphery and to our muscles for fight or flight. But when we're under relaxation, we're with somebody that's not challenging us, but supporting us. It goes back out of the muscles and goes back into the digest digestive organs and reproducing organs. So that way you eat and make love and procreate and create mitosis and growth, anabolic. Mm. <clears throat> but when we're under stress, we go to catabolic. We shut down mitosis. We shut down um, digestive systems. That's why if we're under high stress, we don't digest foods very well. And so the, the blood and everything goes from the internal organs to the external periphery, the soma the viscera to the soma. When you're under relaxation, it goes from the soma to the viscera. <clears throat> well, the inside the cell, the same thing occurs. Every cell of the body has little filaments and little micro um, motor muscle filaments, you might say, dynein and kinesin, that when you're under stress, it transports things from the center of the cell out to the periphery for defense. And when it's, when it's relaxed, it transports it back to the center so we can undergo mitosis and growth. So we have an anabolic and a catabolic parasympathetic, sympathetic side in every cell of the body. So we can take any cell, look at what's happening in the cell, look at the microtubules and the cytoarchitectural structure of it, and tell what's going on with the autonomics, and get a sense of a history of what psychologically is going down that might lead to these symptomatologies. And I've loved studying that. I've been doing that since uh, 1978, really. Wow. <laughs>